What is up guys, kind of also known as Will Chai here and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we'll be showing you guys some DIY computer accessories that you might not know that exist or that you might want. Now, if you're a big fan of RGB like me, you might actually like these accessories. Now, in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys how to RGBify your RAM that can be DDR2, 3, or 4 RAM. And Easy DIY Fab, the company that manufactured those RGB heat sinks, actually saw that video and they contacted me via email and asked if I wanted any more of their products to do videos on. And I said, absolutely. So the two products they sent me was an M.2 heatsink that has RGB, addressable RGB on it. So that's pretty cool. And I'm very excited to try this. Uh, I actually bought another M.2 SSD, which is right here, a Western Digital Black, which is a just a 250 uh, gigabyte model just to use as a scratch disc for my computer, but we'll be taking off the sticker on that and placing this on top. Now, the other product that we got is a M.2 PCIe adapter, and that PCIe adapter can fit up to two SSDs in it. Now, the only catch to that is, is one is SATA and one is PCIe NVMe. So obviously the speeds are gonna differ, differ on those two. One is also gonna be maxed at SATA's speed and the other is going to be able to reach the full peak speed of the NVMe SSDs. But we are going to open up the smaller of the two first. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to take it out, flip it over, and this is what we have. Now we have a fin stack on a slab of metal, obviously, with a light bar in the middle, which is obviously addressable for five volts. And what we also have in the box is a, is that an MSI or a gigabyte adapter? I can't remember. One of the two, I'll make sure that there's a correction on screen with, with the correct motherboard manufacturer, but they have their own kind of uh, RGB addressable header on their motherboard, which can be adapted from a five volt three pin RGB header. And we also have a few clips by the looks of it to keep the RGB heatsink on the M.2 SSD. Thermal pad that goes across the chips of the M.2 SSD. I wonder if this is to scale, just for fun. It actually looks like it's to scale for the most part. And we'll be putting that over top like that. So we have some thermal conductivity and then it will obviously go on the back of the RGB heatsink and we'll disperse the heat. Uh, we do have an instruction manual. And yeah, we can actually clearly see the uh, the clips that go on there, right there. They go on the bottom, clip onto the top there, and that looks pretty straightforward. So we're going to move the RGB heatsink off to the side, and then we're going to open up the M.2 PCIe adapter that was also sent from Easy DIY Fab. So you're gonna quickly pull that out, throw that off to the side. So this is what the adapter looks like. So we have a brushed metal finish on it, and we also have oddly enough, a, a SATA port on the adapter itself. That's very strange. Uh, we have a button on the back of the adapter itself that you can click to change the color of the light bar that is on the side and the top of the adapter itself. And oddly enough, you can actually hold this button down for three seconds and it will automatically sync the RGB light bar using your motherboard. So say if you have a ASUS or Sync compatible motherboard, for example, and you click and hold that button, it will sync it to, I'm guessing, your graphics card? We do have two ports of SSDs, as I mentioned earlier, so you can fit two in here. And I do believe this metal plate here acts as a heat sink. I wonder if they actually included some thermal pads for the heat sink. But you can take this off. Actually, I'm going to take it off. Uh, I need a screwdriver. Luckily, I actually have one sitting here. But yep, it's definitely looking like a heat sink to me. So on the adapter itself, we have obviously two ports here and they can fit up to a 2280 M.2 in size. You can fit up to a, uh, let's go through the numbers here. We have 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. They are labeled on the side here and you can obviously adjust the screw and the nut to whatever length of SSD that you have. On the left side here, we have a SATA SSD. So that will run at SATA speeds, which will max out at six gigabits per second. And we also have an NVMe PCIe SSD slot on the right here, which is what I'll be using with the Western Digital Black Drive that I have right here. So we're going to open up the rest of the stuff that is in the box here. I'm just going to just shove everything off camera here. And we're going to open the rest. Whoa, oh, I'm throwing things around apparently. We're just gonna take everything else that's out in the uh, bottom of the box here, and I will go through them really quickly with you guys. So we have an instruction manual. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward. Don't think I'm gonna need that. 
Uh, we also have a uh, adapter cable that can go into a port on the card itself. I forgot to mention that there's a small little port here and that's a breakaway cable adapter so you can go and hook it up to a RGB header on your motherboard which is five volts, three pin. And we also have again the same kind of cable adapter that is for either Gigabyte or MSI. Again, I'm gonna have the correction on screen. Can't remember which one of the two it is. And it comes with a screwdriver. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's cool. I'm glad it comes with a screwdriver. That's a nice addition. It also has a screw in there. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, oh, it's for the PCIe adapter so you can screw it into your case. Got it, okay. And we also have thermal pads. Uh, looks like we have, we have two there. So we do have two thermal pads to use in the adapter for the SSDs. And oddly enough, it comes with a SATA cable. So we have the uh, M.2 adapter and we have the M.2 heatsink from Easy DIY Fab. Once again, I want to thank you D DIY Fab. Thank you very much for sending these uh, items over to me. I'm definitely excited to check them out. Uh, just because you guys sent me them, I'm going to end up using the uh, vertical GPU mount that I could not use in a previous episode. So I was originally trying to use this mount in build log episode one. So if you wanna see build log, which is a series where I vlog my changes to my computers and take you guys along for the journey. If you wanna see that, that'll be also in the upper right hand corner. You can click that eye there. There will also be a link in the description for this video as well. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly just take it out of its box. If you guys haven't seen it already, it's in build log episode one. So upon opening the box, you get the adapter right in the face. So it's a very hefty adapter. So here it only takes up four slots on your PCIe slots on your computer case. Uh, obviously it will mount like this, but you can't quite see with the overhead camera. So it'll mount like this. It'll look like this in your computer case. Uh, we have a GPU um, PCI X16 riser cable here. And you can see the slot there where your, your graphics card will slot in. And you can have a vertical GPU in your case that doesn't support it. So I will also be adding this into the video because I really wanted to do a video on this, this adapter here because it's an awesome adapter. It's really well built. It looks great in a case. It's just unfortunate that it didn't fit in the previous case. So those are all the things that I, I will be covering in this video today. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Threadripper build, which has all the RGB in the world. As you can tell, I like RGB. And we'll be putting all of these parts in that computer case today and we will be seeing how it looks. So I'm gonna grab that beast of a computer. My back is probably gonna die. So <sighs> let's get into it. And voila, we have our SSD installed in the bracket. There is also a thermal pad that is supposed to go on top of here for this little plate to become a heat sink. Goodbye warranty, I hardly knew you. Okay, as you can see, the computer is now on. I have the M.2 adapter plugged into a five volt header on the motherboard. So everything should be synchronized up. Right now the computer hasn't posted yet. So it's just showing a bunch of random colors of the rainbow. So once the computer gets into Windows, this should all sync up nice and perfect with just a color cycle that I've set up on Asus or Sync. So we're going to wait until the computer posts and gets into Windows. And then we're going to uh, come back and I'll show you guys the colors that is on the M.2 adapter. So now that it's posted in Windows, you can see everything's kind of synchronized together with all the colors, except for the adapter here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold the button on the back of the M.2 adapter for about three seconds and it should sync with my motherboard. So one, two, three, there we go. So as you can see, all the colors are now syncing together. So I'm gonna turn off the lights just so you guys can see kind of the full effect of everything. So I've turned the lights off as you guys can see. The computer looks amazing in the dark. It looks awesome. I'm so happy with it. And the, uh, the adapter itself fits nicely in my setup with all the RGB as you can see right there. It's perfectly synced to the motherboard with everything else. 
the RAM, the CPU pump, the um, RGB 24 pin, 8 pin, uh, graphics card, fans, the LED strip that I have at the bottom, which you guys can't quite see, but it works great. Now, if you don't have a five volt header on your motherboard, you can actually use this guy here. You can actually switch the colors by hitting the button on the back. So I'm gonna quickly do that. So as you can see, I can switch the color just by hitting the button on the back. I could do a strobing kind of red light here. Um, there's a whole bunch of effects on this thing. So if you don't have a five volt header on your motherboard, you could still use this adapter and make it fit with your setup. So with that said, we're gonna move on to the RGB M.2 heatsink just to add a little bit more RGB flair to this computer like it needs anymore. And as you can see, it's actually synced with my computer and it works great. Now, the one thing that I don't like about the uh, adapter itself is the thickness. Um, it's got like a rounded top on it, as you could probably see here. And I don't know why. If it had a flat top to it, I'd be able to put this in my computer. But unfortunately, due to the rounded kind of LED bar that they have here, I'm not able to get it in my computer due to clearance issues with my RAM, which is unfortunate, but it works really well. And it looks decently well as too. Another thing that I noticed is that the thermal pad is not quite cut correctly to length. Uh, it's a little bit longer than the heatsink itself, so you might have to uh, trim it a little bit just to get it to fit. And another thing that is a little bit difficult about this design here is the uh, plastic clips. Why they made them white, I'm not too sure. They should have made these clips black so they actually blend in with the heatsink and the black PCB of the M.2 SSD itself. Another thing is, is they're very difficult to get clipped onto kind of the uh, channel that's in the heatsink here. Um, but other than that, it looks really cool and if you've got room for it, I definitely recommend fitting it inside your computer. But that is the M.2 SSD, so we're gonna move on to the vertical GPU mount. So with the computer now booted up, the vertical GPU mount is now in the case, everything is plugged in, and as you can see, everything is working great. The graphics card, the Asus Strix 1080 Ti is synced up with Asus Aura Sync. Everything's working great. I had just enough clearance, as you can see on the side there, to get this sucker in there. The only thing that needs to be swapped out is the um, eight pin connector cables that are the uh, strimmer cables. I have them routed to go in a horizontal fashion instead of a vertical fashion. So I will have to change those around if I want to continue using this vertical GPU mount, which I might. It actually looks pretty cool looking inside this computer with everything running. And it leaves me a 16 slot on the top there, just below my RAM, an X16 PCIe slot to add another card in if I wish to do so. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. As you can see, everything looks amazing in my computer build. Now, I wanna thank you so much, EZDIY Fab, for sending me those two accessories, the M.2 RGB heatsink and the M.2 PCIe ad adapter. And you can find the links for those products in the description below of this video, as well as the Caselon vertical GPU mount, which is also manufactured by EZDIY Fab. I purchased that again, as I said earlier in this video, for a previous build on a video for build blog, and it didn't fit in that case, so I repurposed it in this case. And as you can see, it works great in this case. I had just enough clearance to fit that in the computer. Now, with that said, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button or subscribe if you want to see more computer videos like this one. My name is Kendall Sloan as Wiltshire, and I will see you guys in the next video. And now time to carry this thing and put it back where it was. Oh, yeah.